Hey everyone, in this video we're going to dive into free stuff in Azure. I did a video a couple of weeks ago on the updated free offer for Azure SQL Database and there was quite a lot of feedback for what else is free and how much of it is free. You might be new to Azure, you may just be using Azure and Curious about, well, hey, what are the things I can try out and minimize my costs? So in this video, I want to quickly go through what are the options for free stuff in Azure. Now, if you are brand new, so you have never used create an Azure account before, if you've never tried to use any of the free offers before, so you're brand new to Azure, you have a number of paths available to you. So one of these is you can actually go ahead and create a free account. So I create this free account. Now, when I create that free account, so I can think of this as a, a day zero. So as soon as I create it, this kind of timer kicks off. So with that free account, I get $200 of Azure credit. So I get 200 to spend. Now I have to spend that in 30 days. So at that point, that credit ceases to exist. Now, while I'm in that free period, and I have that $200, I can use it on most Azure services. There are a few restrictions. For example, I can't use it on marketplace items because that's where their money maybe goes to third parties. I can't, for example, go and buy support plans. And the details around the free offer go into the specifics of what you can and can't do. So if you're actually interested in going to this, you can go and look at, well, how does this work? You can see it saying, hey, look, this first 30 days of sign up is where this really kicks off. Then it has exclusions. And it talks about, hey, buying support plans and Visual Studio subscriptions, um, Express Route, Marketplace. So it's all called out through all of those things. Now you'll notice it does say you do require a credit card or a debit card, uh, a phone number. I think there's like a $1 charge and then it's reversed straight away. So it doesn't cost you anything. But basically it's a way to validate you're a real human being. You're not a bot that's just trying to accumulate accounts. And again, it's only one per human being per account that you're allowed to do this for. So it's just a way of validating you are a human being and you are who you say you are. Now, after that 30 days, or hey, I've used up my $200, well, then what I can do is you have a pay-as-you-go subscription. So I have a pay-go. And this is more the regular type of subscription we have. So what I would do is here, once I've either I'm at the day 30, or I've used it all up, or maybe I just want to start being able to do other stuff and, and just start spending, I convert it to a pay-as-you-go subscription. And the other option could be, as a new person, I just went straight to this pay-as-you-go subscription option. I could totally do that as well. Now, one of the things I also get as a new person, whether I go with a free account or I go straight to that pay-as-you-go subscription, well, there's the idea of this 12 months of specific free services. So it's not everything, obviously, but for 12 months, if I'm new, this is the first time I've done this, hey, I get this amount of certain free services. So this is now I'm up to my month. So the end of month 12, that stops. So I get a certain amount of those free services for the 12 months. And again, that starts from the day zero. So if I started off as the free account, I'm also getting these 12 months of free stuff. And you can see these. And the easy way to see this stuff is actually, if you go to the Azure portal, you can actually just search for free services. So if I'm in the bar and just type free services, you can see right there, it, it's showing it to me. So I can jump over to those free services, which is this window. And here it's showing me the amount that I get for 12 months, so it's only for 12 months, but it's showing me here, for example, I work Windows Virtual Machines, I get 750 hours of 
a B1S and a B2 ATS, so burstable VMs. 750 hours each of a B1S and B2 ATS V2 in Linux. Now, when you look at some of these hours, notice it is hours. It is not saying it's an instance. I, if you ran for the entire month, well, that's probably 750 hours, roughly. But I could also instead run three of those for 250 hours each. It's an amount that I can leverage through that time period. It doesn't have to mean it's just one VM. I could absolutely create multiple VMs, but just make sure they're not running for the entire month. So I could get more instances than that running at the same time, but I just don't run them for the entire month. So you can scroll through and you can see the different things you're getting for that 12 month period. And there's a whole bunch of these things that are available. Now, if you use more than the amount that's part of that is telling you, after that, you'll be billed the pay as you go rate. So it'd be really important to kind of track what you're spending and what you're using to make sure you don't end up spending more than you really want to. Okay, so then that that's great. So you've got those two combinations of free stuff. There's also another bucket. Now this, I'm actually gonna do in the, the shiny universe pen. So for all subscriptions, so that includes the free account, the, the pay as you go subscription, there are a bunch of always free services. And that, as the name suggests, just forever. Well, it will draw forever. Now, obviously, Microsoft reserves the right to potentially change what's included in those. That, that could happen. But the whole point here is that, so for example, if I had the free account, I get the $200 for the first 30 days, and I'm getting that 12 months of free services. And I'm also therefore getting these always free things as well. So it's kind of this cumulative stack. If I'm doing the pay go sub, and I'm in that 12 month of free services, well, I also also would get these always free services. So they're gonna apply to that as well. And that's called out in that free services page as well, what those include. So if we keep scrolling down, we'll then get to services that always include. And notice it's calling out all Azure accounts can use up to the specified monthly free amount. So this resets each month. So for example, here, there's that Azure SQL database offer I called out. And something else I wanna stress is when you're using these free options, I would actually recommend you create them from this page because one of the nice things it will help ensure is you're picking the right option to use the free SKU. You could just go through the regular path and you just have to make sure you tick the box. So like if I create this free database, it will show me at the top, say, hey, apply the free offer. So I'd wanna make sure I'm checking this because I get one of these per sub. So I wanna make sure I go and check that. If I was in a period where I had free VMs, well, hey, it would be selecting the SKUs that are included as part of this free offer but it's showing me a certain amount of Azure App Service, a certain amount of functions, stored objects. You can go and see these various things. The point here though, is if you use more than these amounts per month, well then you just get billed the regular pay as you go amount. So you can go and get those things. So these are always free, they're great to go and try the things out to learn without it having to cost you any actual money. So you have these great always free, and again, that is for everything. Now additionally, there are a few other ways you can get free stuff. So if I am a student, so I'm in an educational program that I have a, uh, I can prove I'm in the educational program. So now if I'm this student, I can create an Azure for Students account. And what this gives me is $100 in Azure credit, but that $100 
is to spend over the year. So it doesn't reset monthly. This is $100 for the entire year. You also get the 12 months of free services. So I'm also getting that as well. And of course, I also get the always free stuff. So as a student, and what you'd obviously be wanting to try and do in these scenarios for this as well, is well, really focus on utilizing the stuff you get for free for 12 months. And then if I need potentially some other stuff, well, that's where you could use your $100 over the period of the year. And obviously, you've got the always free stuff as well. But what's nice about the student option here is at the end of the year, if I am still a student, well, I would just go here and repeat. Go and create the account again. And I get another $100 for 12 months. I get another 12 months of free stuff. And of course, I get the always free things as well. So the nice option for the students is as long as I am a student, I can continue recreating this every year. So I always get, hey, 12 months of free stuff. I'm always getting that $100 to spend throughout the year to help me learn uh, and, and try the various things out. Um, I guess finally, when I think of free stuff, um, obviously there's, I could have a Visual Studio subscription. So I have a Visual Studio subscription. And what that basically does is you get a month. So if I think about the line, it's really at each month you get X amount of monthly Azure credit, and that just repeats for the lifetime of that subscription. And of course, also you get the always free things available there as well. So I get X amount of dollars to spend. The X amount depends on which subscription you have. So if I jump over here and look at the credit, so if I have VS Studio Enterprise, it's $150. MSDN is $100. Visual Studio Professional, Visual Studio Test Professional, it's $50. So again, this is per month. And also I had up here the student idea. So start with $100 of Azure credit, plus all the free services. So it's the 12 monthly ones. And it does call it out. So it says, it, hey, after you use your credit, wait until the 12 months are over and sign up again if you are still a student. You'll get $100 credit and free services just like before. So that's one of the nice things for the students is I can just keep going back and I can keep going lots of nice free stuff. Now, you also may, depending on sort of agreements with Microsoft and projects, you may get other things as part of this. But these are the primary things. Hey, I'm brand new to Azure. Brand new to Azure. Hey, I can go and create a free account once. $200 to spend in the first 30 days. Then I go and convert it to Paygo. Started on that day zero. I also get 12 months of select services for free. Every subscription, including these, gets always free services forever. A lot of them have like a certain monthly bucket that refreshes every month. If I'm a student, I can get $100 to spend throughout the year and the 12 months of free stuff and the always free stuff. But the nice thing here is while I stay a student, I can just go and repeat it every single year. If you have a Visual Studio subscription, you get a certain amount of Azure credit that I can spend monthly. For all of these, and I mean in Azure in general, just try and optimize your spend. So create an Azure budget to make sure you are tracking your spend and to make sure maybe you've not left something running and you're consuming your credit quicker than you wanted to. Remember, you can use that trend analysis. There's an anomaly detection stuff as well to detect if something's happening beyond what you want. If the resource can be stopped, a lot of the compute services, stop it when you're not using it. So it would stop that meter spinning to, for the VM case, for example, for the 12 months, well, then maybe I could run three or four of them when I'm actually doing my testing because I'm going to stop it at night. I'm going to stop it at the weekends. So you can maximize your use of those resources. If I can't stop it, well, is it really got any state you really care about? Look at creating templates. It could be a bicep file, a JSON file, Terraform that goes and creates all your resources. 
create them into a resource group, spend a few hours or a day doing your testing, and then delete the resource group. I stopped spending for all of those resources, especially if I couldn't um, stop them. And then just recreate them again when you're ready to do some more testing and some more learning with that. And even if there is a state you care about, what is there a way to export that state? So like really cheap blob storage or something, and then bring it back. So look at the options to really maximize all your credit and try and get as much uh, free stuff as you can. I hope that was useful. Till next video, take care.